Okay, hey everyone, it's Michael Valtos from Orderflows, and this is the Orderflows Market Analysis for Friday, June 23rd, 2017. And the week started off gangbusters. S&Ps, Dow, all new highs rallying up, very strong rally. Tuesday gave it all back. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, market was pretty much unchanged, and Dow, I think, and S&Ps settled the week actually down for a small loss, small loss on the week. NASDAQ, though, was a big... A big winner this week uh, big gains in biotech uh ended up the week about uh, just shy of two percent up oil though oil had uh even though oil was was up today it was above 43 bucks it was a very uh very bad week for crude oil well bad for <laughs> bad for the market in terms of being down it was down about uh 3.7 percent for the week i mean I, I I hate to use the term it's bad when price of oil is down, but um, I, I like lower oil prices. So anyway, um, that said, let's uh, jump into the market analysis. Before I do, I'll go through the disclaimer. This presentation is for informational and educational purposes only and is should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading. Only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. The tools I want to talk about in this uh, presentation, or tools I use rather in this presentation that I talk about, are the Orderflows Trader Volume Footprint Chart, which is available at orderflows.com, and the Delta Scalper Indicator. So let's just jump right into it. S&P is, you know, um, I'll take a look at the daily chart. You know, I, I like to get a reference in the morning of where the market is based on the daily chart. So again, you know, Monday, big up day. Tuesday, no follow through, right? Lower high even. You know, really what you want to see when you have a big up day like this closing up towards your high, you want to see the follow through when the market reopens and going into the evening session. You don't get it. And that just tells me the market is weak. Um, you know, the rest of the day it sold off, which again, you know, this was the sign early that we couldn't continue in the night session. Um, I didn't expect this market to just sort of go sideways like this. Um, you know, it, it, Wednesday was down a little bit, Thursday, Friday, pretty much unchanged, um, both days. But again, you know, I, I was looking for a little bit of a sell off, honestly, but you know, I just wasn't giving it, you know, this market is a lot of indecision right now in, in this market. Every time you you rally up to a high, you sort of get these doji candles. Like here we rally up um, late May doji candles. Although this is you know, one of these is uh, Memorial Day, but then you know here new highs and you just go sideways, new highs and then you just go sideways. So I mean, who knows? It could just be a, a launching pad for uh, moves moves higher. Um, from here again i'm not one of these doom and gloom skeptics and gonna say oh the market's topping up here uh, i'm not gonna say that every day then when the market does sell off i'll be oh i told you so you know, i know people like that they they'll sit there and sky is falling the sky is falling for five years then when it does fall i told you so well yeah in the meantime the market was up you know 20 <laughs> percent you know but you know there's people they then you know that's how they think they're like well I, I, there's people that they want to call the told you so is they like to jump out and say i, I told you so um with the markets, well, when I say people, I'm talking about uh, certain analysts at, at companies. Um, so anyway, S and P's ten range chart coming into the morning, very tight range, thirty six and three quarter high, thirty one low. Just before seven, you know, you get the uh, price rejector giving a buy here, delta scalper in the next bar. But again, it's you know, where are you going to go, right? Next bar is going to be up. You're going to run right into your your high, but you know, again, it's it's coming in. Right around eight o'clock, you know, I do know the cash is going to open up in, in, at eight thirty, so it's going to be relatively soon. And you know, things can change really quick when the cash opens, and you can see it does. It selling just comes right in um, almost immediately. You got a bunch of imbalances in the bar, which by itself is in, is uh, bearish. Now, you know, when you're dealing with imbalances, you know, most of the time we like to see stacked imbalances, one on top of e each other. Here they're spread out. You got one, two then a group of two, and then one down here. So it's a 10 range chart. You got five imbalances. It's almost half the bar that's imbalanced. And you know, that, to me, that's a very bearish sign, even though they're not stacked. You know, visually, it's nice to see a stacked imbalance because it'll draw out uh, a nice zone. But you know, being a trader, you got to analyze what's happening in the market. Even though it's not stacked perfectly, it's a bunch of imbalances in the bar, and it's telling you, hey, you know, strong selling is coming in. You got a, a big, strong negative delta as well. And 
the market sells off, right? So even if you were long off this bar here with the Delta Scalper, watching how the market's unfolding over the next bar is one, going to tell you you should get out of this trade, and two, it should be telling you you should think about getting short. Okay, so we do sell off, make new lows, hit this new low just before 10 o'clock. Delta Scalper again on the low of the day, which is nice. You've got a divergence. you got a nice strong positive delta, 4,600. You know, this is your strongest delta of the morning, either positive or negative in, in the absolute sense. And you got some nice big chunky imbalances in there, a buying imbalance 3,200. So I know it's changing. I know it's changing from a supply-driven market with a lot of selling going in, a lot of supply being distributed to now in sort of, I'll say, accumulation phase, but... Um, a demand-driven market, you know, where people are, are wanting to be lifting the offer and, and do it aggressively. Next bar, you got a ratio. So, you know, you have Delta Scalper here. You have a divergence, no ratio. It's 10. Next bar, you got the ratio. And what do I say? Every freaking day it says, I say, look for ratios with divergences. And if you don't have the ratio in the bar with the divergence, look to the next bar. And here you got it. You rally all the way up to new highs. You know, you go from this low Delta Scalper. Said, you know, even if you're not convinced of buying on this Delta Scalper, you should be looking to get long based off this next bar with the divergence and the ratio. And you rally up into new highs. You get a couple of divergences, no ratios in here. So not really any major reason to be getting short up in there. Um, then later in the day, you got this. You, know, you sell off from your high back down to your opening price. It's almost, um, I don't want to say half back, but, you know, that's, I don't know. To me, that, that looks like almost a fib. A fib uh, I'm just curious what sort of retracement you're looking at here. Whoops. Hang on. Chart's all screwed up here. Whoops. Hang on. Whoops. Ay, ay, ay. Give me a sec here. I'll get the retracement level here. So from your low, which is this level, up to your high of the day. We have to scrunch this chart up a little bit. Yeah, well, it's it's not 61. 61.8 is actually where this point of control is. Um, so you get down to about 76. Then you bounce back up, and you start coming back down. And I know, again, you know, FIB guys with, oh, yeah, you know, you sold off there, and boom, we rallied back up. Okay, fair enough. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you, you, you bounce off the opening price. To me, it's important. You know, the opening price is always a, a target when you're coming off from your high where can you go to you can go to your opening price or if you're rallying off your low look to rally up to your opening price you know when the market's going sideways you tend to rotate around your opening price and next bar delta scalper and a ratio but it's coming into the cash close you know it's 258 here cash close boom big selling comes in um you know 12,000 on the delta which is quite big as well you know yeah 10,000 here so these bars you know, again, it's, it's this to me, this is just cash close activity. It's Friday afternoon, um, cash close. You're going to see a lot of volume going through, and you do. You see close to 300,000 lots over these two bars. So that was uh, S&P's bonds. Bonds were kind of quiet, actually. Um, where are we here? Bonds. Okay, so bonds, you know, again, yeah, you had a ratio with divergence and a point of control right on the low. I literally show you guys these charts every single day in, in, in the same markets. I'm showing you the same market. So it's not like I'm showing you one day in the bond market. Oh, here you have it. Then I don't show you the bond market again for two weeks. You know, I show you some other obsolete market. No, I'm showing you the same markets. The same things happen daily. Um, point of control on the bottom, ratio and divergence. Market rallies up, you know, six, seven ticks there. Comes down, ratio sorry divergence no ratio ratio in the next bar yeah runs up here to a bear a bullish uh, sorry a bearish ratio you got point of control up near the top you know at this point it's all about uh, managing your trade and you know to me this this trade didn't really work out and i'm not gonna say yeah you would have bought it in here in this bar and held it down to here and rally back up here and got out no to me this this bar you know sort of spoils it and you know you're, you're just trying to cut your loss here you know maybe you lose a tick or two there uh, eventually it does rally up into new highs but again you know not much there in the bonds but there was a couple of ratios with divergences there um fives where's my five-year chart there it is again you know very very tight range here in the five years um not really much of anything this morning you know you do have a 
divergence up here at the high, but very tight range, very tight range. It's uh, 118.09 to 118.12 and a quarter. So very, very compact range this morning. So again, you know, it's hard to trade, hard to get any decent trading options when you know, you're just rotating around your opening price there like that, you know, and like I said, you know, on directionless days, that's what the market does is it rotates around your opening price. Oftentimes it, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's value, but you know, that's what you do, right? I mean, when there's no direction where you're going to hang around, you're going to hang around unchanged and, you know, where the opening auction occurred. Um, take a look at some currencies now. The uh, yeah, finger hurts. Um, okay, so yen again, yeah, not much, you know, not much activity, not much. I'll say not much activity, but you know, not a whole lot of stuff going on in the market. So here you got, you know, Delta scalper on a red bar. I'm not interested. Here you got it on a green bar. I'm interested. It does rally up. Get some trap traders up here. Market starts to come off. Um, you know, boom, boom, boom. You hit this swing low, bounce up a little bit, get up here towards the high, you get within one tick of the high, nothing up in here telling me to get short. Stacked and balanced market just goes sideways. Another stacked and balanced market goes sideways, pops up a little bit. And just so again, it's this market also is just hanging around your opening price. You know, I don't even, you know, on your volume profile, this is how it looks. And you just sort of end out the day. So again, it was sort of a a, a neutral day as far as the uh, the yen was concerned. Okay, so the last market I'll talk about here is uh, soybeans, and you know soybeans closed and they reopen at eight thirty. You know, right before that, you had a ratio with the divergence. But again, I'm not going to say take a trade right before the the market closes and reopens. So. You know, you got the Delta Scalper right on the reopen. Again, you know, I'm not a big fan of taking signals right on the close or the open of the market. So anyway, that said, market sold off right after the reopen. You got down here, you got a ratio and divergence. It doesn't work out. The next bar comes right back down. Okay, stops you out. Fair enough. Next bar down here, um, potential long entry is you got a green bar. I love this, the way this Delta went from minus 258 to positive 10 and closing at minus 12 next bar you got the delta scalper giving you a nice buy signal and you know the market rallies up from you know 902 and a half all the way up to six and a half and then works its way back down comes back up to that uh, six and a half level which is the opening price um you know you got a single print when you trade up there or is it here you get the two lots you know first time you trade you get up here you know you got eight lots second time a little bit less fair enough i'm not yet convinced that that's a big sell signal either um, though, but again, you test the low again, 45 lots trade, you have negative Delta green bar though. Um, next bar, you got the ratio, no divergence though in this bar at the low, cause you got the negative Delta. You come down, you, hit, you get up to swing high, sell off again. You got a new low, you got a divergence, but you don't have a ratio. Next bar, you got the ratio. And again, you know, again, this is going into the close though, right? It's, it's, uh, Friday afternoon, 104. Market's closing in about 10 minutes. You know, heaven forbid you have uh, your system crashes in, in those that 10 minute window. But you know, if, if you got a good system and faith in it, the trading system, meaning your connectivity is fine. Um, I, I've had one or two issues over the years where I've, I've lost connectivity and had to restart everything. So you know, again, I'm not usually looking to take trades um, right on the close, but uh, or going into the close. But you know, again, you know, if if you have a good system or you're, you're trading in a place that uh, you know it's solid yeah you could definitely take this trade you know it's 106 you're going to have about 10 minutes to get whatever you can out of the trade you know from 902 back up to the 906 area then you get up here you got some trap traders but again you know i don't want to start micromanaging all these little moves as you're coming in five minutes for the close but this one is definitely doable um whether you want to be taking this or even this delta scalper two minutes for the close is another story so you know there were some decent trades there in the uh, in the beans as well. So, you know even though today was kind of uneventful for the S and P's, it did. Uh, there were opportunities in the S and P's. Were opportunities in the uh, in some of these other markets. So, thanks for watching this. Uh, to learn more about trading with order flow, visit my website orderflows.com, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.